good morning to all today's topic is interconnection between functional components before going to this interconnection between functional components we'll be seeing we'll be having a small recap of functional components of cpu as already we have discussed in first class there are four units which will be present which will be acting as a functional components of a computer that are input unit output unit memory unit and then cpu yes of course these are the functional components of computer actually through with the help of input unit will be giving input to the cpu inside cpu there is central processing unit will have three different units one is arithmetic logic unit another one is mem register that is our temporary memory another one is control unit and then apart from this if you are giving input it will be reaching to the cpu cpu will be processing this input with the help of our memory unit and then finally the processed data will be displaying as an either as an output and it will be or it will be storing inside the memory unit so these are the functional components of computer this topic we have discussed already now we are going to see how all these functional components are connected that is only interconnection between functional components you will be saying if i am asking how it is connected you will be saying a word wire is yes, of course with the help of our cables that is wires only all these things are connected inside our cpu in our microcomputer will have communication that is common bus architecture see look at this picture i have drawn a picture on the top on the left top will have cpu and then right top will have memory and then in between i have drawn a double headed arrow that is only our bus that is called system bus which will be carrying or transmitting information that is a transmitting path which will be used for transferring data inside our computer and then below to that i have drawn input devices output devices in between those input devices and output devices we have controller which will be used to, to convert our uh, normal english language to binary language as well as binary language to our easy understandable language that is our english okay see as i said already we'll have system bus which will be used for interconnection of all the components in our microcomputer we'll have common bus architecture actually bus means in real life why we are using bus just for transportation similarly in case of our microcomputer we'll have bus actually buses transmission look at this i have written buses transmission path buses transmission path it will have set of wires or uh, uh, this like conducting wires which will be carrying information i hope you will be understanding what is system bus architecture what is bus in case of micro computer what is the thing we are using yes of course and then bus bus can be bus just now i said it's a transmission path it will have set of wires that is conducting wires actually bus can be classified into three types one is address bus another one is data bus another one is control bus these are the three classification of bus bus can be classified into three types one is address bus data bus another one is control bus actually all these buses are used for supporting transmission of data you know very well what is data what is information we have discussed at this topic already a data is a raw fact then information is processed data yeah of course all these buses are used to all these buses are used to trans uh, used to transmit a data then all buses are used to transmit the data what is this address bus what is this data bus what is this control bus actually address bus will carry only the address of a data 
just uh, you consider our data if i am storing any data inside our memory without memory we cannot do any process so whenever if i need to do any process like addition of two numbers or something just imagine i need to, if i need to do addition of two numbers 2 and 3 definitely we need to store 2 and 3 in some memory and then at the time of processing we'll be taking the data and we'll be processing it again we'll be producing the result that result also will be stored in some memory actually so we need to depend on some memory for performing all these process i hope you will be understanding so we'll be depending upon memory always for performing any process either simple addition of two numbers or subtraction or complex uh, process whatever computation process it may be whatever manipulation it may be definitely will be depending upon memory so whenever i am sending any data the data will be stored in a memory as i said already this address bus actually uh, the data will be stored in the memory i said this data will be stored in a memory that memory name is called address of a memory you just understand whenever we are storing any data inside a memory that memory will have unique name will be called as address will be re referring that memory with the help of address whenever we are going inside a memory see if you are taking a content book if i am telling you to read any content i need to specify the page number then only you will be identifying the content page number and you will be taking that content and you will be reading if i am saying the topic alone if you don't have index what you will be doing doing you will be searching the entire content book to find out a single topic so we will be feeling very tough to do that process instead of that we'll have separate separate page numbers with the help of that page numbers we'll be identifying that page numbers also will be given as an index the same concept only will be used in our computer inside our memory memory will be divided into number of partition and each memory will have certain separate separate unique address this address bus will carry the address of the data the next bus is data bus data bus will be carrying the data which will be stored in the memory or which will be uh, given from the input device or which will be given from the processing device to the output device the next thing is control unit see whatever process it is happening everything will be given to the control unit control unit will be coordinating all the components we have seen this topic already this control unit that is sending request receiving acknowledgement all those things will be taking care by our control bus so control signals will be carrying with the help of our control bus so address can be classified in sorry so bus can be classified into three types one is address bus data bus and control bus address bus will carry address of a data data bus will carry the data which we need to do any process or which we need to produce the output that data and then control bus will carry control signal so these are the things will be happening inside our computer all these components are connected with the help of bus okay we'll be continuing with the next topic i hope you will be understanding this topic we'll move on to the next topic that is booting and then the next topic is concept of booting what is booting if we switch on your computer do you know what will happen without knowing we are using our computer actually if you switch on your computer inside our computer lot of process will happen just listen this if you switch on your computer inside a room i hope you know about room ram before uh, explaining these things i'll just explain about what is ram and what is room actually memory that is our primary memory can be classified into two types one is ram another one is room ram stands for a random access memory room stands for read only memory actually ram is a temporary memory room is a permanent memory inside our cpu will have rom actually this is um, 
pre uh, rome will have predefined program whenever uh, rome is manufacturing at that time itself inside that rome will have a boot program actually rome is a memory it's a main memory which will have only boot program if i switch on a computer from our room from our room the boot program will be copied and it will be stored inside the main memory you just understand if i switch on our computer room will have boot program that boot program will be copied and it will be saved in main memory this is called booting booting means once if you switch on the computer our boot program from rom will be copied to main memory that is called booting i hope you will be understanding what is booting booting is main mem uh, what is that term? boot program will be copied from rom to main memory when we are switching on the computer that is called booting yeah next what are the steps will be followed in case of booting the first step is our cpu if i switch on the computer our cpu will be running and it will be jumping jumping the instruction that is the first thing second thing is bios i hope you will be you would have heard this word bios that is basic input output system actually soon after switch on the computer our cpu will be uh, jumping uh, just it will be started running instruction initially our thing will go to bios basic input output system actually basic input output system will be conducting post <coughs> post is par on self test if you switch on the par supply our bios program will start executing it will be conducting post that is par on self test par on self test it will be like self diagnostic test it will be diagnosing uh, whether any problem is present in the computer or not by itself that is only post par on self test is a self diagnostic test will be conducted when we are turn on the computer when we switch on the computer actually initially our cpu will run all the programs initial program will be bios basic input output system which will conduct post par on self test it is self diagnostic test what are the self diagnostic test will be conducted it will be checking our memory and it will be checking our config uh, that is it will be configuring our uh, systems hardware and then it will be checking our starting video circuitry whether it is proper and it will be checking all other devices which is connected with our computer all the devices will be checked and it will be configured and it will be verifying everything whether it is functioning properly or not that is only post this will be conducted by using basic input output system this is the second step once if this bios is over our bios will transfer from bios thing to either bootable uh, bootable drive or bootable drive or hard drive we can boot our computer with the help of either our bootable drive or hard drive two procedures are there either bootable drive or hard drive if it is bootable drive will have boot sector inside that bootable drive and then this boot sector actually this boot sector will have a program that is boot strap loader program which will loads and execute our operating system you just understand after bios our control our uh, control will go to just understand our uh, after bios it will go to either bootable drive or hard drive any one thing it will go but both the things will have boot sector only but there is a difference let me explain now if it is going to bootable drive inside that bootable drive will have boot sector this boot sector will have 
bootstrap loader program bootstrap loader program what is this bootstrap loader program actually it is a program which will load and execute our operating system i hope you will be understanding boot sector will have bootstrap loader program which will load and execute our operating system that is only boot sector as i said already after bias bias will transfer control to either bootable drive or hard drive if it is bootable drive will have bootable uh, sorry boot sector inside that will have bootstrap loader program which will loads and execute our operating system if we don't have bootable drive and stuff that if we have hard drive our con uh, actually inside that hard drive will have mbr master boot record inside this master boot record actually this master boot record it, it will checks partition table for active partition partition after executes it after uh, finding the boot sector and execute it you just understand if it is hard drive will have mbr master boot record it it uh it it checks partition table for active partition after finding the boot sector and execute it see it will actually uh, in case of bootable drive will have boot sector directly so no problem but if i am going to hard drive will have mbr a lot of things will be there and then this master boot record will check we will have lot of things inside the hard drive will not have only separate boot sector alone so it will be checking where is that master uh, what is that uh, boot sector will have mbr master boot record this mod master boot record will have collection of actually if you are taking hard drive inside the hard drive will have n number of data inside that this mbr will find where is that boot boot record it will be searching and it will be finding it after finding the boot boot record it will be started executing uh, that uh, loading of operating system and executing the operating system that is the thing will be happening in case of hard drive so this is the main difference between bootable drive and hard drive so after completing the process of bias will go to boot sector boot sector depending upon the drive that boot sector will be opened if it is bootable drive directly boot sector alone will be there it will be loading that uh, boot sector uh, program that is bootstrap loader program with the help of that program it will be loading the operating system and it will be executing the operating system in case if it is not bootable sector will have hard drive in case if it is hard drive will have mbr master boot record this mbr will check and find out where is that active partitioning that is where is our boot sector it will be finding after finding the boot sector again it will be uh, it will follow the same thing bootstrap uh, program will be loaded and it will be loading our operating system and executed that's all these are the steps will be followed in case of booting i hope you people will be understanding all those things next we'll go to types of booting actually booting can be classified into two types one is warm booting another one is cold booting if it is cold booting will not if it is cold booting will be switch on the computer our process will be starting from the initial stage that is like a cpu runs a, what is that all instructions after that it will go to bias after that it will go to boot sector all those process will be happening step by step this process if i switch on a computer then that type of booting is called cold booting or hard booting the another type is warm booting it is like instead of switch on the computer if i press reset button that is restart button then it will be called as warm booting or soft booting actually what will happen in case of this warm booting as our booting process will not start from step 1 instead of that it will be starting 
from booth sector loading alone host will not happen that is uh, what is that um, bias process will not happen post process will not happen directly booth sector loading alone will be happening so what will happen we may lose any files or data so to avoid that we need to shut down your system shut down our system properly and we need to use that system properly actually in case of any emergency only we should go for warm booting it is otherwise called soft booting in case of warm booting or soft soft booting the booting process only will start from boot sector it launched from start from the first step that is the difference these are the two different types of booting i hope you will be understanding very clearly what is booting what are the types of booting and what are the steps will be uh, taking place if i switch on the computer thank you we'll see in next session bye thank you